Hi Webster City. This video is here to serve as a quick reference for training and to provide something that people can quickly reference to understand and interpret the deliverables on the ArcFlash study that Professional EE Services was contracted to complete for your distribution system. I'm Jim Gable, a registered professional engineer in the state of Iowa. We will walk through the various deliverables and how they are related. Firstly, you now have a detailed system model of your electrical distribution system. This model was developed in SKM Power Tools, which is one of a few power system modeling tools available. You don't need to be an electrical engineer to use this software, and there is a viewer seat available if you desire. Note that the switching mechanisms in place, both normally open, normally close, have generally been modeled for your city. This allows you to simulate situations where perhaps a fault might occur and visualize power flow scenarios. Note that currently there's a section of the system in tan and the remainder of the system is in black. The black part of the system denotes that there is currently power flowing or available in that section of the system. Currently Bowman number two is out of service. We will put this, this relay back in service and then take Bowman number one out of service. We then see how that, that impacts the system and what parts of the system are now in the dark. This may be helpful to think through various fault conditions and exceptionalizing type of scheme in the future. It should also be noted that with this model, you're now not too far off from moving towards a more integrated outage management system or even integrating with a GIS type of solution. There's quite a bit of work to go into doing that, but this is one important early step along the way. Further, if at any time you'd like to make use of another tool, engineer, or make the data in this model available, there is an export feature within SKM that we can utilize. The next thing I'd like to show you is the naming key or naming convention for the buses that were modeled. So we'll skip over to an Excel sheet. This Excel sheet has various columns in it. The first column is the reference number, which consists of B and then a number. Next to that is a more accessible naming convention that will probably be more readily recognizable to someone familiar with your city. The agreed upon level of granularity for modeling is shown here in the contract, and that's what you see here. These map to the same Excel sheet, which then maps to our system model. So let's try an example. We'll go down to B77. It says it's Kindle Young Road with three transformers on a radial node. If we head over to our, our system model, we'll use a control F to find that particular node. And we type B77. Pulls back and jumps us right to that area of the map, which is, looks like up in the northeast of the city. And it should also be noted that the general layout of the system model is representative of the geography of your city in terms of cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. Back to the Excel sheet, note that there's a type column that denotes which of these buses, like what they are, where the circuits are fed from, where the bus is fed from, in terms of out of what switch gear 
what substation. Whether it's modeled, which is mainly for my reference as I completed the model, and then whether or not a label is provided. Labels are being provided only for the areas where there's a higher arc flash risk, which turned out to be your main substations in switchgear. So an accurate system model, which should be synced up with your electrical distribution sitemap, can be a challenge to maintain over time, but it is important. As an example, any request for interconnection on your system in the form of distributed generation can more, be more readily evaluated for system impact when you have your system modeled and accurate. The next thing I'd like to do is show you an example of a possible use over time. A very common thing that comes up is a request for the available fault current at various places in your system. These changes often come from a new business, perhaps expansion, and often an architecture or engineering firm would request the fault current values at the point in the system also referred to as the available short circuit current. So here's how that works. Let's go to the same area as we just looked at, the Kindle Young Road area with that radial branch, B77. Let's say that there's a new business that's looking to expand there and grow, and a request for fault current comes in during design. Knowing the actual buttons to push is less important just than getting the intuition that this software is what provides those results. But what we'll do is a balanced system study, SC for short circuit. We run the study. Okay. Now we want to do a data block format, which is essentially what prints out to the, the model. And there we are. You see that a three-phase fault condition would result in just over 6,000 amps, and a single line and ground fault would result in roughly uh, 5,600 amps. The other deliverables that you can expect as part of this project include an updated CAD electrical distribution map So this file in CAD form will be updated. The model SKM project file in zip form. A hard and co soft copy of the report will be provided. A few articles and white papers that can provide some background on our flash. This Excel sheet, which is useful from a naming convention standpoint. Labels for the metal cloud switch gear will also be provided. And then lastly, there will be a large color-coded map that will be provided for the reference of linemen before they go out and work on the system. Thanks for your time and I hope this was very helpful.